Hey, this is Kathy from Kathy Cooks For You and welcome back to my kitchen. We have an unusual pandemic upon us and we just had St. Patty's Day. I made the normal fare for St. Patty's Day but I also added an Irish bread. I decided, why not? All the stores are empty in the bread aisle, right? So why not make some Irish bread? I came across this brown Irish bread instead of a soda bread. This one was called brown Irish bread. Except I didn't have all the ingredients, but I improvised and it turned out amazing. I can guarantee you, you will be able to find these ingredients in your store because probably just like my grocery store, your bread aisle is wiped out. So try to make this, your family will love it. So stay tuned. All right, let's get started. So the recipe called for one and a half cups of regular all-purpose flour, which I had. Then it called for one and a quarter cups of whole wheat flour. I did not have that, but I had this. I had whole grain dark rye, and I thought, why not? I'm gonna try it. So you're gonna use one and a quarter cup of whole grain dark rye in here also. It turned out so good, guys. This dark rye you can find in your aisle that you find all your baking goods. Um, dark rye, you can get a whole, the whole wheat. You can try any kind of flour in there. And then a quarter cup. Well, this is a half cup, but I'm eyeballing a quarter in it. Then we are gonna add three quarters a cup of quick oats. Still easy to find. And this, I'm sure, is not leaving the shelves wheat germ. You can get wheat germ by your cereal. So check that out and look, by cereals, usually you can find ground up wheat germ. There's so many vitamins in this. Well, let's just read you a few. Where are my glasses? Let me just read you a few that this says on it. An excellent source of vitamin E and folic acid. Yum. All right, so we are going to put a half a cup of the ground wheat germ in here. So we're gonna add two teaspoons of baking soda because this is a soda bread, brown version, but it is a soda bread, and one teaspoon of salt. Now we're just gonna have those mixed lightly here, and those are our dry ingredients. Then for our wet ingredients, the recipe called for buttermilk. Well, when I made this, I wasn't going out to the grocery store to go find buttermilk. I forgot that I had cultured buttermilk, powdered cultured buttermilk in my freezer. So I didn't use this either. I didn't even have milk. But what I did have was heavy cream. The recipe calls for one and three quarter cups of buttermilk. So what I did was I used a half a cup of heavy cream and then just use the rest as water, one and a quarter cups of water, and then I squeezed some lemon juice in there. And I used that for my buttermilk. It worked, it was delicious. So we'll see which tastes better, this version with the powdered buttermilk or the version I did before. I mean, because when you're thinking of milk, you're thinking of its protein and fat. So even if you used water and put like a tablespoon of butter in there and a squeeze of lemon, try that, that may work too. You know, you, you gotta, you can play with this stuff. So, follow the directions if you do buy the powdered buttermilk. Follow the directions on how much you use per water. I'm putting in my one and three quarters cup of water in with my buttermilk. I'm gonna stir that up. And then we're gonna add two tablespoons of honey to this and get this all stirred up. This is so quick. So, so quick. I mean, you can have this done and pulling out of the oven in 30 minutes. Now we're gonna combine the two. And we're just gonna lightly blend them together. This does not need to be kneaded. It's a quick bread, which is awesome. No yeast. It uses soda instead, which is awesome. Came together nice and quick. So this version is just slightly runnier. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna let it sit for a minute because there's oatmeal in here and that oatmeal is gonna start soaking up some of these goodies. So we're just gonna let this sit 
and see what happens. For some reason, this version is not as clumped together and it'll be fine because we're gonna put this out on a flowered surface. So I'll just have a really flowered surface so some extra flower can get up in there. But for right now, we're just gonna let this sit and just soak up for five minutes. No reason to be scared. If we were putting these into pans, the little bread pans, it wouldn't matter that it, it's a little runnier, but I'm trying to make them into round loaves like I did the first time. So that's why I want this a little thicker right now. So let's just give it five minutes. I let this sit for five minutes and yeah, it really thickened up. So do not despair. Um, maybe the consistency of the buttermilk versus my um, heavy cream, I, I'm really not sure. But we're looking good now. So now we're going to flour our surface. I have a pan. I'm using a pan. I'm gonna make two round loaves. If you'd like to try these in a baking dish, you can do that. Um, and usually Irish soda breads in, you put it in a pie pan. Um, it's usually round, not, not like bread shaped, our bread shape, not US bread shape. So we're just gonna put some flour down and we are going to get this out here and just, we're not gonna knead it. We're just gonna shape it into balls. So we're just gonna pour it out. Let me get a little flour in my hand. I'm just gonna, it's still kind of wet. Make it a little easier to turn out if it's got some flour in there. Okay, see this is wet. You know, I think quick bread, you know, banana bread, that's wet. And then we're just gonna put some flour on top of it too. I'm using a lot here. Okay, and then let's get some shaping to it. Now you could just do one like this, but I'm gonna break mine into two. Flour, and then I'm tucking the edges under. That's helping get some flour in there. And there we go. Make sure there's flour all around it. Yeah, these definitely are wet. I'm actually gonna just blend a little of that flour in. I did not have to do this with my first batch. You know, it might have something to do with the humidity in the air. I'm not sure. Now let's just tuck, tuck that. And there we have it. We're gonna put that on our pan. Beautiful. Now we'll do the other one. Okay, let's get some flour in there. Just knead it slightly, just to mix some of that flour in. We'll see. Okay, got probably a whole piece of bread on my hands, but um, like I said, it did not do that the first time. But the show must go on. I am not happy with this one. So I'm just gonna flour the top. I'm just gonna try to shape that on the pan a little better. And now that my hands aren't... There we go. Now we're gonna score these. This one will have be, come out much prettier. But it doesn't mean it's gonna taste any different. And there you have it. We are gonna put these in the oven at 425 for 10 minutes. Then we're gonna turn the oven down to 400 and cook it another 10 minutes. Now, when I made these a couple days ago, I had to cook mine an additional 10 minutes on top of that. The recipe said 425 for 10 minutes, 400 for 10 minutes. You tap on it, feels kind of that hollow feeling, you're good. Well, mine needed another 10 minutes at 400. So let's see what today's does. Oh, it's looking beautiful. I could still feel that that's not done in there. But the outside is nice and crusty. This one doesn't look too bad either. We are going to leave those in five more minutes and we'll see what we have. We are at five extra minutes, so let's check. So 25 minutes total. Oh, it looks so beautiful. It's feeling better. I'm gonna give it three more minutes and I'm just gonna put this on top, some tin foil on top, that way it um, kind of will stop some of the browning. Although it is Irish brown bread. 
And I'm gonna put it in for three more minutes just for giggles. All right, let's get this out. Oh, that looks beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Let's cut into one of these. Should I let it rest a bit? I did it the first time. All right, I have my butter here. Oh man, this is gonna be so good. The last time when I used the heavy cream, the water, and a squeeze of lemon, um, it definitely had a different consistency. That's okay, this looks good too. Um, the crust on this doesn't seem as hard as the first one, and that might have had to do with I, I had a wetter dough. Um, but it's beautiful inside. Um, looks cooked all the way through. So let's, I mean, the more butter, the better on fresh bread straight from the oven, right? I mean, oh. oh. Ready? Mm. That is so good. And so packed full of vitamins with the oatmeal in here. The wheat germ and the dark rye bread. This is amazing. And since our grocery stores don't have any bread anymore, at least for right now, you can make your own. And you that have your kids at home because they're not in school, now have a project. So here's to you. I hope everyone stays healthy. Thank you so much for watching Kathy Cooks for You, and we'll see you next week.